doing a quick recording of this live stream to show how I got an auto tile system working in Godot and my art workflow around how I managed the assets, managed and created the assets that is. So uh, to show you what I'm talking about in Godot, there's an auto tile system and I wanted a faux 3D look where things aren't quite 3D, but you get the sense that they are just from the way they, they stack. So it has an interesting perspective, like the Zelda style perspective. And I wanted this to work very smoothly. So you could just quickly draw rooms, hallways, and there might be a little random tile here and there, and you could decorate it with uh, other tiles. Um, and it came together pretty well where you get this all in one quick shot. You can draw at a level and it has that uh, semi 3D effect. And the way this is accomplished in Godot is having a grid of images that uh, you want spaced out exactly so that the system can pull the grid together. And then you use the bitmap, bit mask option to draw out what is essentially the puzzle pieces of how things fit together. The easiest way to see it is with the corner pieces. You can see this these sets of corner pieces, for example, are made to fit when there's a wall in, in the middle of them. So there might be a corner of a wall over here. And these corner pieces are made just to be a empty room type of corner wall. So for example, let's bring up the, the tile set. So there's the corners that have just wide open. And then if you start taking stuff away, you can see like there's a little extra corner shadow in, in the way I'm doing it in particular to get the faux 3d effect. I'm not doing the standard square tile. I'm using a 64 pixel standard floor, but then my tiles are a little over three times that and with a little extra space on the sides so that you can uh, just quickly draw out the 3d walls, fake 3d walls and uh, it comes together very quickly. And you can see how you have to draw out the, the kind of puzzle pieces. In Unity, they have, um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but there's a different way of laying out the rules, but same concept where you lay out the, what sides touch, what sides uh, never touch, and what has an empty space. And I'll go into uh, Affinity Designer now to show how I brought this together. Uh, Affinity Designer, I set up the grid and I have the image that you saw in Godot. Uh, I, I laid it all out in Affinity Designer and something I did to save myself a ton of time was using symbols over here. And I think uh, Illustrator also has symbols. Uh, in Photoshop, you'd probably use smart objects. Uh, but what the, the great thing about this is, if you're laying out similar or the same objects in different spots, you can quickly update, edit, and create, um, uh, modify them. So rather than modifying every single wall, I have the object set so that I just modify the one and it modifies my entire template. And that saves a ton, a ton of time. So if you get the chance, use objects, use components. Uh, I think XD is components, use smart objects. It will save you a ton of time. So this is basically how I laid it all out in uh, Affinity Designer. And you'll see my, my tiles, some of these corners, all I really have is a little extra shadow on the corners. So it's not dramatic and I could probably get away with not having them in there, but I really wanted to learn how to lay everything out. And when you're in Godot, switch back here. When you're in Godot, you also have um, single tile options where, let's see if I bring up a single tile. You'll see it over here. where you'll get, um, you can have texture offsets and centering. And that's how I achieved the fake 3D as well. 
is I made sure that the centering was on, the center texture was on, and Y sort also so that it would line up correctly. And um, I set offsets so that if it was just a blank square, it lines up exactly the 64 by 64, but more than that, it will go out around the edges. I don't have collision set up for it, but uh, it wouldn't be a hard thing to, to build and create. Um, oops. And so that's pretty much it uh, as far as workflow and the tile system. And just to show, uh, this was the original concepts inside of Clip Studio Paint that I put together. And the reason why I went to Affinity Designer was I ended up working at 64 pixels is, so, is pretty darn small and a lot of details get lost and it's just easier to use vector artwork to redraw and redraw. Um, so I can easily scale it and um, modify it as, as vector artwork. A little character still, um, pixel art. I, I find it easier to draw uh, freehand in uh, Clip Studio Paint. But uh, Affinity Designer, I, this particular template, I can rescale it. Like if we went with a bigger resolution, I can just double the size of the file, scale it all up times two, and it'll look just as good. There are some pixel effects because Affinity Designer, you can mix pixels in with uh, vector. Some of these might have to be redone but that's really only this one spot where I have like the burn marks and stuff is pretty much the only spot I use pixels. Otherwise it's all vector artwork with some effects that will all easily scale up. So that's a quick summary of uh, how I got this, the, the tile system put together for what I'm doing or how I wanted it. And uh, you obviously can have different layers of tiles which I've also put together. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to actually build out the system. So now it, to lay out a puzzle level or anything, it's, it's fairly trivial. You just, you just draw it very quickly. And that's a quick summary and um, that's it.